Hey there, good morning everyone. Tuesday the 2nd of May 2023. This morning's devotional is a reading from Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 which reads, Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or afraid because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Despite what we may say or think, in the boasting of our lips, we are weak, frail and susceptible to fears of all sorts. We have an inbuilt security that no amount of whistling in the dark can calm. We seek assurance concerning the things that frighten us the most. At one time or another, most of us, if not all of us, have been gripped with fear. We may be afraid of things that happened in the past that might suddenly crop up and haunt us in the present. We are afraid of what people think. We are afraid of what people do. We are afraid of circumstances. We may even be afraid of the future. Perhaps we may even be afraid of ourselves. See, fear attacks the most precious parts of our life and keeps us from living the life that we were meant to live. For some, they may even fear fear itself. Perhaps we may even fear taking a risk. Now, why is that? Because taking a risk will move us out of our comfort zone. You know that zone where you feel all safe and secure? If you have a look at fear, it does one of two things. It can either paralyze you or drive you to take action. For example, if you had to come across a snake that was going across your path, what would you do? Option one, freeze with fear. Or option two, take the best route out of there and avoid the snake. I know for myself, I'm not a great fan of snakes. I've been confronted with snakes on a couple of occasions on my mountain bicycle. But I've always chosen to take the safer route to make sure that I do not endanger myself by confronting the snake. So the question that we need to ask and answer for ourselves is this. What are you going to do with your fears? You can either keep them and suffer the negative consequences or you can surrender them to God. God doesn't pr promise in Isaiah 41 verse 10 that he will remove us from the fearful circumstances. Instead, he promises to strengthen and to sustain us through them. Consider young Joshua, for example. He had just been given the leadership after Moses had died, and he had to lead the nation of Israel into the promised land, the land of Canaan. Can you imagine what, have, what must have been going on through his mind? This after the nation had rejected an earlier entrance after the 12 spies went into Canaan to scout the country out. And they came back and they told them, two of them told them, this was a positive report, very good reports, and then 10 people said it was negative, it was a bad place. And so the entire nation of a couple of million based their decision on what 10 people told them. The principle here is that we need to make sure that what we hear are the facts. If we're not sure, we need to go and read, sure, uh, research the facts. There are also those out there who make it their mission to instill fear into people. Don't be one of them. Look at what God tells Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And then again in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. My dear friends, one of the forms that fear takes is that of worry. When we are afraid of something, we worry about it. As we continually worry, we make life miserable for ourselves and for those around us. As the psalmist writes in Psalm 23, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and my staff. They comfort me. Let us take comfort and assurance in those words. May the Lord be with you. May he bless you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be with you always. Goodbye.